What's up, Tim? Hello. This is our local dark magician player. This is Mr. I'm so angry. Ah, welcome. Tim, you have a Dark Magician deck profile for us yeah, we have today. a Dark Magician deck profile for you guys. It's not super updated, it has some of the newer cards, but it's been doing pretty well at Locals. Um, we're going to give you guys an explanation on the cards, and we're going to be doing a deck profile for you guys. Yes, yes, okay. Right, so let's start. So, for our monsters, we have three Dark Magician, aka three Bricks. You don't really like this card, but you play the deck, so I guess you do like this card. You have to play three. You can't play two, I've tried. If you play two and one goes away and it just gets really, really bad. So, have to play three. Dark Magician Girl. Uh, terrible card, but let me draw two off Soul Serpent. So I play it anyways. That's another brick. Yeah, it's another brick. Uh, it's okay. She's cool. She's cute. And then we have another brick. Red Eyes Black Dragon. You play this for Red Eyes Dark Dragon. And yeah, uh, you never want to see this card. It's really bad to see in your hand. If you see it, then... Uh, Unlucky. I highly agree with that. And now for the more important monsters. Three Magician's Rod. This is the best normal summon in Redex. Adds you yeah. any spell or trap that includes Dark Magician as text. And it's really good to combo with Eternal Soul because the effect that activates on the opponent's turn lets you add it back for free with Eternal Soul. So if you have this, if you have Eternal Soul, it's usually a free engine that recycles itself. Oh, okay. Three Magician's Soul. Uh, the, probably one of the most important cards of Redex. You need this to get Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl to the graveyard. It has a variety of uses that Basically, like your deck works off this card, you just need it. Two Apprentice Illusion Magician. Perfect. This helps you get past Dragoon and it also adds some consistency to your deck. It also helps you make Verte easier because it's an extra extender, sort of. So, two is good, three is too much, one you don't really see it enough, so two is just right. We have the Spellbook Engine. So this is the engine I found out to be probably the most consistent. If you like drawing cards in this deck because a lot of your decks include stacking and manipulating what cards you see on top of your deck. So having a draw engine that's also spellcaster is good to have. <laughs> you have three circle. Adds consistency to your, to your deck, gives you a free banish, and overall it's just good. And also when you use it with souls, it's a free draw. You have three soul servant. Uh, again, one of the most important cards of your deck. It gives you a free draw too whenever you have your full setup. So it's not uncommon to go like summon rod, ditch souls, and then um, summon rod, then souls. Your souls will pitch a dark magician girl, and then you go verte, and then your soul servant will let you draw too. So pretty easy to set up. Great card. Helps you get to your souls, and yeah, just good. Okay. One secret of dark magic. Um, it's just good, helps you go for game, gives you a bit of a consistency boost, and also if you do happen to draw red eyes, you can actually fuse with it using the Secrets of Dark Magic. Oh, he games with this card against him. Hi. Illusion Magic. It's not really that great. This is probably one of the worst color traps that you run for Dark Magician, but sometimes you just need two Dark Magicians. Mainly when you have like a monster, and you have this in your hand, and you have this. This is like a combo for make a uh, the Dark Magician, so you don't really like it, but you kind of have to play it. I side it out a lot. Uh, Inheritance, this is the most flexible card in your deck. If you don't know what spell or trap to get, and you have spells or traps that are excess in your graveyard, you grab Inheritance, so that way you always know that you're going to have at least one card that you want. Red Eyes Fusion for the engine. You have your field spell lineup, so it's Secret Village and Terraforming. Um, Secret Village just wins games, so it's really good. If you ever get to this against those decks, they just lose because they can't activate spells. So, very good. Also, very good against Rogue. It's very good to turn off your opponent's spell cards. Yeah. Three alerts. Again, you like drawing cards because you manipulate your deck. It gives you consistency. And overall, it's just a good card to have because most of your deck is dark. Are you okay with banishing Dark Magicians uh, using a lot of darkness? Yeah, that's exactly why you play three. Because if you play two, then it would be a little bit worrisome to banish Dark Magician and get another one hit by another banish. But since you play three, it's actually enough for your alert. Okay. Uh, Monster Reborn helps you get your level 7 stack to go into your level 7 XYZs. It's perfect. Two Eternal Soul, uh, three is too much, one is too little. So two is just about right. One Magician's Navigation, again, you probably slide this out after game one. It's okay, it has a variety of uses. The main use that you're going to use is actually the graveyard effect to negate your opponent's spells or traps. You almost never use the on-field effect. If you need to get to the graveyard, you usually use it and pitch it with souls to get a free draw. Do you ever use the on-field effect? Yeah, I used it against him, actually. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, too bad I got negated. <laughs> and, uh, 3 summon limit. Probably the heaviest floodgate right now. It's very bad against control matchups like Eldritch, but against decks like Virtual World and Drytron and stuff like that, you need stuff that prevents them from playing the game. And summon limit is just good because you can pull the board for a turn, send it with souls on your turn, and yeah, it's just good. Oh, okay. 
And uh, one skill drain, the fourth floodgate, uh, very, very strong. If it ever hits the field, it's okay because your eternal soul will let your dark magician still attack for 25. And it doesn't really affect you too much. It does affect you a bit, but mostly if you do flip up skill drain and it stays on the board, it usually hurts your opponent more than it hurts you. And that's the main deck, that's 40 cards. Perfect. So for the extra deck, you have a rolling question email. So you go into this with magician souls. It's pretty good. You get to suck up on both monster if they misplace it. And uh, yeah, it's just a card that you go in the middle. Here's the line, Mercy Anaconda. This card is self-explanatory, used to make Dragoons. Okay. Uh, Crowley. So you play this because you play the Spellbook Engine. It's pretty good. It gets you to one of your Spellbook cards. Blue Boy is probably the worst one, but usually it will get you to a draw too. So it's a good card to make in the middle. And then with Crowley, you usually build into Selene. So Selene is good because it, it can actually revive almost every card that you play, including Dragoons, as well as the Dark Magicians. I didn't think of that. So That's actually very good. It's very good because if your Dragoons ever dies, you can use Selene to bring it back. Even though Dragoons won't have its pop effect anymore, it's still a Dragoon, so pretty terrifying card. You have your Nightmares, your Nightmares. Standard. Dorito, the Moral Leader. Um, it's not really that great, the only way they can really go into it is with Dark Magician Girl and um, Apprentice Illusion Magician, but it's okay, sometimes it catches your opponents off guard. I don't really like it too much, and I would cut it if I had uh, Access Code Talker, which I currently don't. So if you have Access Code Talker, play Access Code Talker. <laughs> but one of the cool things of Naruto is that you can actually XYZ up into Ebon Illusion Magician. And Ebon Illusion is, uh, again, a pretty cool card. It helps you banish your opponent's resources, and it helps you sometimes fetch Dark Magician. Perfect. So. One of the great things about Evolution is that you can actually summon it on top of a level 6, rank 6, uh, Spellcaster. So you can go Naruto into Evan, it's a pretty cool interaction, and uh, yeah. So you have Draco Sack, uh, lack of a better card really. It's okay, sometimes you go into it, you don't go into it too much, but um, it's cool. Big Eye, uh, great under summon limit to take your opponent's monsters without summoning more. Sometimes they have a really important monster that you can take, if it's under skill drain, then sometimes you can go like, activate this. Chain Illusion Magic and take one of their important cards, so that's cool. I think it's probably one of the better uh, rank 7s that you play. Cards broken. Uh, Zeus, because you have the space. You never want to go into wow. this card if you have Eternal Soul because, you know, it'll send your whole field to the graveyard. But if you don't have Eternal Soul, sometimes you can get like a 2 or 4 material Zeus. And it's usually okay. So for example, you can go like uh, the 2 of Prince Illusion and Dark Magician Girl, Narito, Evan Illusion, they can go Zeus. And that's how you get a 4 material Zeus. That's broken. Yeah, it almost never comes up though. <laughs> Uh, Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. Doesn't come up too much, but in the matchups where it's really good against some rogue deck that just keep on popping your stuff, it's really, really good. Also, it counts as Dark Magician in the Graveyard. So, for Eternal Soul, you can bring it back. It also has a pretty cool interaction, so if you're ever missing Dark Magician in the Graveyard and your opponent's playing like Dogmatic or something, you can send this to the Graveyard and it counts as a Dark Magician for your Soul Serpent. Uh, one of the Dark Magicians, it's one of the fusions that you go into more often. It's pretty good, it helps you establish more control, and because your deck wants to draw, Dark Magicians is a great card because it lets you draw basically two cards, one on your turn and one on your opponent's turn. And if you happen to draw a Floodgate, like Summon Limit or Skill Drain on your opponent's turn, you can set it and activate the same turn and it'll really catch your opponent off guard. Do you ever think about running two of those? I used to, but uh, I had to make space for the two Dragoons. Oh. So, um, some people might wonder why you play two, and it's mainly because one you can summon off uh, Verte, but the other one you can actually summon off uh, Secrets of Dark Magic. So that's why you mainly play two. I used to play Eye of Tobias too, but it became too much of a brick. But um, yeah, you might think it's weird that you run two when you only usually summon one, but you actually could summon two in this deck, so that's why you play two. Yeah. It's a shame you can't su you can't actually search Eye of Tobias either, right? Yeah, it's unfortunate, but even if you can, I don't know if I would play it. So uh, for the side deck, we have uh, the Gamma Package. It's probably the strongest hand trap against most meta decks right now, getting rid of your opponent's monster and then getting the effects. Perfect. Um, if you ever happen to use it on your own turn because they use the Ash Blossom on your whatever, like maybe they use a Ghost Ogre on your um, Dark Magical Circle, it's great because it gives you two monsters and uh, yeah. Three Phantasmae, it's a level 7, it's a dark, it's a dragon, it's just a great card. If they ever play Lynx, you can actually use this, and it's good because it helps you not only go into your rank 7s, but you can also fuse with it to make a Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. So it's great for also unbreaking your hand because, because Phantasmae could put back a Red Eyes or a Dark Magician, so it's just one of the best cards. Oh, the card's too good. Three Nibs, it's Nibiru. One Call by the Grave, because it's Call by the Grave, just really good, don't need explanation for it. One Duster for the backer ducks. 
and uh, three Dark Ruler no more for all those pesky decks that put up huge boards and you can't get rid of it. Dark Ruler no more, you negate everything, you make up Dragoons, and then you, yeah, destroy your whole board. Very so, nice. that's the deck. I did uh, want to ask you, um, do you think Dragoons is an overpowered card? I think Dragoons is strong if you look at it in a vacuum. The single card of Dragoons is extremely strong, but I think if you look at what's surrounding it, it's not as good as some of the other like super top tier cards. I think it's good by itself, but what you need to play in order to make Dragoons a top tier card or like an insane card just isn't there. I'm not saying Dragoons is bad. I still think Dragoons is extremely powerful, but I don't think it's overpowered to the point where every single deck would play it. Cause there are a lot of decks in the meta right now, like Drytown and Ritual that don't play Dragoons cause they don't need it. Okay. And your deck is more control based, right? Yeah, so the whole point of my deck is to basically set up a board and uh, control the board until you have game. So mainly what you want is you always want to open up with Rod and a way to get the Souls. Because if you have Rod and Souls, the three other cards are basically just support your play. Rod and Souls get you to Dragoon, but if you have something like a Soul Servant, then it's also a free draw too. If you have a Dark Magical Circle, it'll help you establish the board. If you have a Secret Village, Dragoon is a Spellcaster, so Dragoon is a protected village, while Village basically doesn't let your opponent play. So the whole point is to kind of control the board. Usually if you have a Dragoons and a Summon Limit, it's usually just game in game one. Fair enough. I think the deck is good. It's just a little bit inconsistent because you are playing so many bricks. It's good for going first, not terrible for going second, uh, ironically. It's actually okay. You could break some boards, as long as it's not something like Vanity's Ruler with Herald of Perfection game one. It's usually uh, okay. It's a very fun deck to play. I usually play it at my local free tournaments, and uh, yeah, I have fun with it. I draw a lot of cards, control the boards, and it always feels good when you uh, win against a meta deck. Like last week, I was playing against Drytron, and turn one, I opened pretty good. I opened Dragoons with Village and Summon Limit, and you just couldn't do anything. Uh, in game two, I hit him with a Dark Lord and a board and took his board apart. So it's always fun beating these like super high-end meta decks with a fun deck that you made yourself. That is that is actually that is the goal in Yu-Gi-Oh. Is there anything that you do on the side besides play Yu-Gi-Oh? I play a, a few games. I do some other TCGs, um, White Swords, Pokemon. I do some computer stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of hobbies. Like chess is one of my hobbies. Uh, I play video games online. I write articles. A lot of stuff that I do. The articles you write, you, what, what website do you write them on? So I write on YGO Pro Deck. It's one of the websites that um, currently sponsors me. I write articles generally about Edison format and some about Yu-Gi-Oh. So I've been doing archetype reviews. One of the reviews I've been doing is Cyber Dragons. Another one I've done, I believe, is Dragonity. But yeah, mainly YGO Pro Deck. If you want to check out uh, my username, Honor is in Pick the Sky. And there's some articles for you if you want to read about Yu-Gi-Oh! or learn more about the game or different formats and stuff like that. Alright, well thank you so much Tim for your time, no for showing us your beautifully amazing deck profile that you fought me against and you beat me. It was amazing. Right. Thank I you. appreciate you. Have a good one guys.